I As I stepped out the stage door, the glow from the casino was lighting up the desert. And the door swung open and the people came out. The sound of money, laughs, music poured past them as if there was just too much hilarity inside to stay bottled up. It was out of my way, but I felt like walking through there for the sheer joy of knowing I could. The deputy sheriff standing just inside gave me a big, Hiya, Sam. I waved and kept moving through all the action. I passed a wall of slot machines, the dice tables, blackjack. Hiya, Sam. Swing and show, Sammy. Here, make room for Sam. No, like, man, thanks, not tonight, man. Can you dig? I got to run into L.A. I'll catch you, like, tomorrow, man. I loved the way the crowds opened up for me, and I circled the room twice, getting loaded on the atmosphere. They kept us away from the other times we played Vegas, and there'd be a law against us. We'd have been, sorry, but you're not allowed in this casino, you understand? While the other acts had laughs and gambled, we went back to the colored side of town, and we understood. But now we didn't have to understand. The joy of it swept through me. Every time I walked through that door, two of the chorus chicks were standing at the roulette table waved and made room for me between them. I had no desire to gamble, but people were gathering around to watch my action. I dropped five one hundred dollar bills on the table. Like, man, can you put it on the red dot, man? Like, the one that's red, please, all right? An excited murmuring rose around me. Sammy Davis! He's Sammy. Sammy Davis! The chicks were grinning, digging my big time move, man. The dealer spun the wheel, I shook my fist at him. Man, if you yell, if you yell black at me, there's going to be a race riot, man. Can you dig that? You gotta laugh. I lit a cigarette and I took the first drag and the ball clicked into the red six. The dealer matched my money with a huge stack of old chips and pushed it all back to me. I split my winnings, slid one pile of each to the girls, playing it Cary Grant on the French Riviera style. With a little bow and said, thank you for bringing me good luck, ladies. I turned around and rode away on their gasps. Walking along the corridor to my room, I intensified the satisfaction, the bittersweet of a contrast, concentrating on the emotionless faces, remembering the matter-of-fact voice. You can't stay here. You'll have to find a boarding house in the, uh, other side of town. Now they wanted us enough, so they were breaking their rules. We were bigger than Jim Crow. They were paying us $7,500 a week. Best money we'd ever made. But that was the least of the payoff. It was as though a genie had materialized out of show business and said, you're going to be a star and anything you want is yours, man. Like, you're as good as Joe Schmo. And he handed us a solid gold key to every door that had ever been slammed in our faces. I sat in an easy chair in my living room, absorbing the acceptance, smoking a cigarette, enjoying the luxury of the suite, and picturing myself in the middle of it. I showered and called room service for a hamburger. There was a knock at my door. One of the chorus kids was standing there wearing a skin-tied blue jeans, if you know what I mean. I laughed. They've got crazy room service here, man. She laughed, too. She didn't understand the joke, but she laughed anyway. That was the part of it, man. When you're making it, you get laughs with a good morning, chicky baby. Charlie was waiting in the car in the front of the hotel. Baby man, like, you can drive the first half of the drive there while I'll catch a few hours of sleep, man. I climbed in the back seat, got comfortable, and the car rolled down the strip toward the highway. I saw the big neon sign flashing my name across the desert. I could smell the brand new leather as I rested my face against it and kissed that expensive seat with all the love I had for everything it represented. I was glad to take over the driving. Nobody's invented the booze that will give you the kick like the first few times you drive your first Cadillac convertible. I pulled onto the highway and let the car swallow up the road. The sun was coming over all the mountains and I saw the night leaving, the day growing bigger, brighter every moment. It was one of those magnificent mornings when you can only remember the good things as always. Nothing as bad as ever happened. I would like I was to do this medley of shots. That this first one. The, the, the edge of the window was exactly right for my height, and for my left elbow, my, my fingers filled perfectly into the ridges around the steering wheel, and the, the clear desert air was streaming in through the window as it was wrapping 
around my face like some gorgeous swinging chick giving me a facial. I turned on the radio and filled the car with music and I heard my own voice singing, Hey there. Oh, God. What are the odds against turning a radio on? And it's, it's the exact station for the exact moment when the, the disc jockey's playing your first hit. For a second, I was afraid. I was getting so good that something was had to happen to take it all away, but the car, the sweet in Vegas, the hit record, and all, what they symbolize, it, it was the start of a new life, and nobody had given it to me, so there wasn't anybody who could take it away. It all come from show business, and as long as God let me keep my talent, it would keep on coming. We were building any day, and any day now we'd break wide open, and I'd be a star, a real goddamn star. And nobody could ever again tell me, here, this is your corner of the world, stay there. And that would be it, man, that would be goddamn it. We were on a double lane highway, the two cars going each way. A green car passed me, the first I'd seen in ten minutes. At another time, I might have raced it, but I didn't need that jazz anymore. I was on my way to record my movie, my first movie soundtrack. It wasn't really being in pictures, but it was closer than I'd ever gotten before. I visualized myself driving through the Universal Studios in my own Cadillac convertible. The guard was tipping his hat. Good morning, Mr. Davis. They're waiting for you on soundstage number one. The green car was slowing down, but it wasn't pulling over. To the right, they had to stop for a flat or something. They were pulling over to the left. I knew there were women in it because I noticed their hats. Whoops. Stay away from them, man. I moved into the right lane as fast as I could, but I start, as I started moving into it, not all the way. She was straddling the two lanes. Now what the hell is she trying to do? Oh, she's trying to make a U-turn on the parkway? Or is she? Why else would she be slowing down? She must have missed her turn off. Well, go on, baby. If you're gonna do it, then do it. I got all the way over the ride and gave her the room she needed, but she didn't move. She stayed in the middle. A little left, a little to the right. Now it looked like she wanted to stop. Make up your mind, lady. She cut a shot to the left, hooking, and making a wide U-turn, then stopped, stretch out across both lanes like a roadblock. I had no choice but to use the oncoming lane to swing around her. I started to make my move, but suddenly several cars were coming toward me. I was boxed in. I hit my brakes. Only a second ago, she had seemed a mile away. I was jamming on the brakes with all my strength and pulling back on the wheel as though hoping I could pull the car to the top of my two hands. I knew I was going to hit her. I cut the wheel as hard as I could. I tore the wheel fan and broke it on the brakes right to this day. Grinding, steel twisting, flash shattering noise screamed all around me. I had no control. I was just there. Totally consumed by it, unable to believe I was really an aut automobile accident. I saw the impact spin her car completely around and hurl it out of sight. Then my forehead slammed against my steering wheel. As I felt pain, I saw my hand moving. I was stunned by the knowledge that I was still alive. I heard Charlie moaning in the back. Thank God he was alive, too. I felt blood running down my face and into my eyes like it had a couple times in the army when I'd been hit over the head. But I could hardly see. But I knew I'd be okay as soon as the blood cleared away. I was afraid to see what happened to Charlie. When I turned around, he was trying to get up off the floor. Like, Charlie, man. Like, are you okay? I opened my door and got out to help him, reached in the back seat and took a hold of his arm. When he stood up... I could see his jaw hanging loose and blood coming out of his mouth. Oh God, like Charlie, man, I'm very sorry about this. Please forgive me, man. Can you? I'm sorry, man. Cars were stopping. The people were running out of the diner and gas station. Some, someone said, It's Sammy Davis. I started up the road to see what had happened to the women, but a soldier stopped me. They're all right over there. I better get you to hospital. I'm okay. My friend's hurt. I pulled the soldier over to... Charlie. He had both of his hands in his mouth and blood was pouring through his fingers. I put my arm around him. It's going to be all right, man. Don't worry. It will be okay. He looked up and made horrible cho choking sounds trying to speak. He pointed to my face, closed his eyes and moaned. I reached up. As I ran my hand over my cheek, I felt my eye hanging there by a string. Frantically, I tried to stuff it back in like if I could do that, it would stay there and nobody would know. It would just be as though nothing had happened. The ground went out from under me and I was on my knees. Don't let me go blind, please God. Dude, don't take it all away. 
people were picking me up and carrying me and putting me somewhere, but I couldn't see. I couldn't move. I was half awake, half asleep, hanging somewhere between the past and the future. But there was no future anymore. All the beautiful things, all the plans, the laughs, they were lying out there, smashed, just like the car. The doors were going to close again. The people who had been nice when I was somebody would turn away from me. None of them were going to say, hi, is Sam, anymore. I heard a siren. There was movement under me. I knew I was in an ambulance. Can it really happen this way? 26 years of working and taking it and reaching. Was that all for nothing? Did you finally get it and blow it so fast? Was that little touch all there was for me for my whole life? Am I never going to be a star? in love to hear is it all